Hello, I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a wooden framed, metal legged, king size bed frame. Now, I made this bed for $115, and little disclaimer about that if you shop at a big box store like Lowe's or Home Depot, expect to pay well over $200 for this bed. Now, if you go to your local lumber yard and buy your wood there, and then go online for the metal parts, then you're going to save a lot of money. So let's get into the build. To begin this build, I've got seven eight foot long two by six boards. Take two of your boards and mark at 80 and a half inches on both boards. Be sure to wear both eye and ear protection when making cuts. Use your saw of choice to make these cuts. I'm using a miter saw here. Next, take two more boards and mark it 79 and a half inches on both of them. Now with the remaining three boards, measure and cut at 83 and a half inches. Now for the base of the bed, meaning the slats, I'm gonna use two by fours. Now the reason I'm using this over OSB or plywood is because of cost. Um, $35 a sheet for plywood versus uh, $35 for 13 boards. You're saving about $35 going with this. Also, it's very strong. Now, because most warranties on mattresses require that you have no greater than a two inch gap, we've gotta have 13 of these boards. So, uh, let's go cut these and get this installed. Measure and cut these 13 two by fours to 76 and one quarter inch. Now that the materials have been cut, set aside the 79 and a half and the 80 and a half inch boards. To assemble this portion of the bed, I'm gonna be using these three inch screws here. Now these have the star head on them, so uh, it comes with its own special bit that I'll be using. Now I like these because they're wood screws that tear through the wood and tend not to split. And then uh, this star bit actually helps to uh, guide the screw so it doesn't uh, strip the screw out. To begin with the construction, lay out the two 80 and a half inch boards on the sides. And then lay the 79 and a half inch boards on the head and on the foot here. Now take note that the 79 and a half inch boards are going to go uh, crossing over the 80 and a half inch board here so that when this one and a half inches is taken up and one and a half inches on the other side, you will end up with 76 and a half inches in between, which is exactly what we want to have one half inch of extra space for the mattress. Using the drill, I'm going to put three screws here in the end, making sure that both boards are level and flush. I'm just going to screw in to keep this nice and tight together. Now, if it does start to separate here as you drill, you can back up a little bit and make sure everything is nice and tight and then go forward again. Okay. Now that those three screws have been put in, 
move down the 79 and a half inch board and start on the other end. Once the frame has been put together, it's time to use those 83 and a half inch boards. And they're gonna go on both of the ends here and also across the mill. Now I'm gonna use a tape measure to make sure I have this exactly in the middle. And the reason you have to have a middle support is also because of mattress warranties. Many of them require you to have a middle support. Just like before, I'm going to use three screws to get this middle board installed on both ends. Now if you're going along using your screws and you hear the wood start to crack, you might want to use a drill to pre-drill holes into your wood. That way it won't uh, crack on you. And now moving along to the two side pieces, do the same on the ends that you did with the middle. Just put three screws in there. And I've gone ahead and pre-drilled just to save uh, the wood from cracking. And also, I've pre-drilled about four or five holes along the sideboard over here. And that'll keep this nice and tight. Now the legs of the bed here are gonna be this metal pipe. Now I've got an eight inch long, half inch pipe nipple, and then a half inch floor flange. You're gonna need 18 of the floor flange and nine of the pipe nipples. Now, one quick note about this. For all the metal parts that I bought, they were $35. Now I know what you're thinking. You just went to a big box store like Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace Hardware, and you priced them at over $180 for all those pieces. There's a big difference between a uh, big box store and going online and searching for the same products. Let's get these legs attached here. So I'm gonna take one of these floor flange and place it on here. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like whenever you walk up to your bed and you kick underneath and you hit your toe on the leg. So I'm gonna bring this back as far as possible here. So maybe about right there. Let's see what we got here. That's five, and of course that's about two and a half. So good enough. And I'm gonna use these one and a quarter screws here because they won't pop through this wood. I'm just gonna get this attached here. Okay, and of course put all four of these in here. Now that this has been attached, take your pipe nipple and screw that on here. Make sure to get it there as far down as it'll go. By hand is fine. And then screw the top piece on. All right, and that's how simple it is to get the leg. Now to find the location of the middle leg, I am just measuring out here to get the center. And then once again, placing this uh, close to the edge so that hopefully we won't be kicking this. And then, uh, like all the rest, I'm just screwing it in here. All nine legs are secured and ready to go. Now this part, I do recommend you have somebody help because this bed is a little bit heavy. Um, I don't have anybody with me today, so I'm just trying to get this flipped over myself, but I do recommend you have somebody take off some of the load. Now with these metal legs, they're a little bit abrasive, so 
I'm probably going to be getting some coasters to uh, help keep the floor from getting scuffed up if we ever decide to slide this bed around. So it might be something you want to consider. You'll also find this bed is quite strong and secure. I think you'll have a hard time finding a better frame for less than $100. If you do, uh, definitely share because I'd like to see, see that one. All right, I think it's pretty well lined up where I'd like it here. So I'm just going to slowly set this down here. Previously I made a queen size bed like this and it used one inch legs which added significantly to the weight of the bed and uh, these half inch legs will be more than enough. We're on the home stretch now. Time to get these slats installed. So I'm going to take the first one here and I'm going to butt it up against the head here and then I'm going to be using some two inch screws to put one in each side of this board. So one up here at the head. And then one more over here on this other side. No need to put one here in uh, the middle piece. Now, as I had mentioned before, some mattress warranties require there be no less than two inches between the slats. So, which doesn't seem like much. So make sure you have a tape measure and put in here uh, a two inch gap between these. And then screw these in together. Thank you for watching this king size bed frame build. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any questions about the build, be sure to ask in the comments below. I'm Seth Johnson with Land the House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. If you would like to build a matching headboard for this bed, check out the link in the description. On a side note here, for the mattress that I selected, I had to add an additional four slats because the warranty requires that there be no more than one and a half inches between the slats. So when you are considering a, a mattress, do check out that warranty because uh, a lot of mattresses these days are 10 year warranty and you definitely want to um, partake in that. So do consider the slat uh, gap that you have.